Live vaccines are one of the more advanced applications of engineered bacteria. In this study, Splitter and co-workers engineer laboratory strains of E. coli as a vaccine vector against the intracellular pathogenic bacterium Brucella. What they are trying to do in this study is have the bacteria be engulfed by phagocytes and used to present Brucella peptides by MHC class 1 display. It is much easier to elicit type 2 MHC display. When typical bacteria are taken up by a macrophage, it enters a vacuole which will fuse with lysosomes, which result in destruction of the bacteria and degradation of its proteins. The resulting peptides are captured as class 2 MHC complexes and presented on the cell surface for binding to T-cell receptors on helper T-cells. Class II display is the normal way that the immune system detects bacterially infected cells. Class I MHC display involves cytoplasmic proteins. Typically what happens is a virus infects the cell resulting in cytoplasmic production of viral proteins. The proteasome generates peptide fragments out of the viral proteins. These peptides are sampled by TAP and loaded into class I MHC complexes. These elicit binding to a different population of T cells, the cytotoxic T cells, which will kill these cells. Though it is not the normal order of events to elicit class I responses with a bacterium, it is possible to engineer bacteria that will do this, and the advantage is you can train the immune system to identify infected cells and kill them. This has utility for treating viral infections and cancer cells. Live vaccines derived from engineered bacteria are the largest area of therapeutic bacteria research. They are used to generate T-cell responses. All bacteria can elicit B-cell responses in production of bacterium-specific antibodies, but typically bacteria don't naturally cause cytotoxic T-cell responses. In this study, they employ invasin from Yersinia pseudotuberculosis expressed in E. coli to actively invade epithelial cells and macrophages and deliver peptides. Post-invasion, the bacteria are inside endocytic vesicles which fuse with lysosomes, then get degraded and peptides get displayed on class II MHC complexes. If you also put Listeria lysin or LLO from Listeria monocytogenes into the bacteria, they will lyse the endocytic vacuole resulting in release of antigen to the cell cytoplasm when these bacteria infect macrophages or dendritic cells. Peptides in the cytoplasm can be displayed by class 1 MHC which can then elicit cytotoxic T cell responses. One interesting thing they note is the hypersensitivity of mammalian systems, specifically to E. coli, isn't particularly advantageous here. Though they do wish to elicit immune responses, they don't really want to initiate strong innate immune responses. Such responses are primarily the result of chemically specific moieties present in enterobacteria, most significant of which is the lipopolysaccharide moiety called LPS. They suggest that engineering the E. coli genome to make the organism less stimulatory to the host would greatly improve the usefulness of this vaccine approach.